Hello, good evening. Hello, how are you? My name is Anke, A-N-K-E. I'm German, as you can hear, but I've been living in France for the last 20 years. And before moving to France, I lived actually in England and in Cork in Ireland. So I've been with Travel Department uh, since 2017. And uh, today I'm presenting you our tours in the south of France. Uh, so you will see our tour in Provence and also our tour to the French Riviera. So on the first slide, you see already some highlights uh, of the tours. So right now I'm actually uh, close to Avignon uh, in Provence area. And um, yeah, just the next slide, please. And I will show you the map where it is located. Now here you see the south of France. And uh, the yellow ones are belonging to the Provence tour. Uh, it's highlighted in yellow. And then the other ones here is the French Riviera. So the whole region is called the Provence Alpe Côte d'Azur. And as you can see, so the Provence tour is here in Arles. Uh, we are located in a very nice and central hotel in Arles. And then we do some day trips to Montpellier, to La Grande Motte, to Avignon, and uh, also Les Beaux de Provence. And on the other side, French, French Riviera, you're being um, located in Cannes. And then we are doing some day trips to Antibes, Nice, Monaco, Monte Carlo, and also Grasse and Saint Paul de Vence. So I'm going into some details. It's just to show you it's in the southeast of France. So here is already Italy. And uh, sorry, just come back again, please. <laughs> now here is already Italy. So the French Riviera is very close to the um, Italian border. And you will see a very strong influence uh, of Italy in Nice, but not only Italian influence, but uh, many different other cultures. And here we are. Uh, in Provence area, and just next to it is Occitanie. So in the past, it was called Languedoc Roussillon. Maybe you've already been to this part of France, maybe during the 70s or 80s on some campsites. And uh, now it's called Occitanie. And uh, Arles is very close, as you can see, between Occitanie and the Provence area. So it's also very much influenced uh, of, uh, by different cultures, and it's a very interesting mixture that you're going to see on the next uh, pictures. Okay. <laughs> now, this is a description of the two tours. So the first one here is the Provence tour. You're going to stay seven nights in a nice three-star hotel in the city center of Arles. It's only five minutes walking distance to the main square. The first morning I'm walking you through Arles. So you get your bearings and I will show you a lot of uh, the Roman heritage that we will see uh, in the, on the next pictures. And in the afternoon, we are driving to Eckmort. Eckmort is a medieval village. Uh, you can still see the city walls and you can actually walk on the city walls. And it's a very interesting um, little village, a little town, very close to the, uh, to the Mediterranean Sea. And just next to it, you will see some uh, pink uh, lakes because actually the salt is extracted just uh, outside the city walls of Eckmort. So a very interesting uh, trip in the afternoon to Eckmort. On the second day of our excursions, we're uh, driving to Montpellier. It's a very lively, very dynamic and young city. And uh, it's in the Occitanie uh, region. And uh, we are going to visit uh, some nice uh, neighborhoods. I'm walking you through Montpellier, then you have some time off for a coffee or some shopping. And in the afternoon, we are driving along the Mediterranean Sea to La Grande Motte. So you can put your feet in the Mediterranean Sea if you like in the afternoon. And then the third day, we are going to Avignon. Avignon, you may know, the popes uh, were in Avignon during the 14th century, and I'm uh, guiding you through the uh, palace. And then we can see as well the very famous bridge. And in the afternoon, we are driving through the Alpi mountain range to Les Beaux de Provence. This is a very nice medieval village, a perched village. And we are spending the afternoon there before we are driving back to Arles. 
And in between, you have a lot of free time and I will give you many, many ideas what to do during your free time. Um, there are buses or trains are going to different places, very easy to take the bus or the train here in, in uh, uh, France. And also uh, there are a lot of ga uh, art galleries in Arles, so not only the Roman art, um, but also Romanesque art, uh, Christianian art, and also uh, contemporary and modern art. So on the other side, you see the French Riviera Tour. It's also seven nights in a four-star hotel in the city center of Cannes, so everything is in walking distance. And the first day, uh, we are driving along the Cap d'Antif, which is one of the three peninsulas on the French Riviera. And then we are going into the old town of Antibes. I will walk you around and then you have free time. And in the afternoon, we are driving along the coast to Nice. So we are uh, visiting uh, the old town of Nice and you will see the very strong Italian influence in Nice. A second day, we are going just outside Nice to Villa Rothschild. You may know the very famous banking family, the Rothschild family, so we are going into one of the villas of this family and you will see the beautiful art collection and especially nine beautiful gardens of this villa. It's a really, it's a highlight of the tour. And in the afternoon, we are going to Monaco uh, in the old town of Monaco. So you will be able to visit the um, Prince Palace if you like. And then later we are going to Monte Carlo and you will see uh, the beautiful casino and uh, a lot of fancy cars parked in front of the casino. It's just another world. <laughs> and then on the third uh, excursion day, uh, we are going to visit one of the local perfumeries in Grasse. And in the afternoon, we are driving along a very nice countryside road to the village uh, Saint Paul de Vence, which is very famous because a lot of painters, they used to paint in Saint Paul de Vence and also a lot of international and French actors and writers, politicians came to Saint Paul de Vence. So these are the highlights of the two tours. And I'm going to show you some pictures so that you can um, get a better, um, better idea of uh, each uh, destination. So first, uh, Arles is the capital of Camargue. So Camargue is actually a very interesting um, area, very close to the Mediterranean Sea. It's a very fertile area and you will see uh, very typical animals on the following pictures. But first of all, you're, you're located here in Arles, so your hotel is in Arles. And you see already here, this is the cathedral, it's a Saint Trophime with the beautiful portal here. You see the entrance gate of this uh, cathedral and this um, entrance gate is from the 12th century, so a very nice example of the very typical Provencal Romanesque art. And we go inside. Just next to it is the cloister that you will be able to visit during your free day. Uh, also very interesting and beautiful uh, Romanesque art. And here you can already see this is the Roman heritage. So this is here actually the ancient theater uh, that you can still see some ruins, but uh, it's still a little bit left. And then afterwards, we are going to visit here this amphitheater. There was room for 21,000 people uh, during the Roman period. And of course, you see the nice river Ron going into the Mediterranean Sea this way here. And uh, there are also some boats going from Avignon to Arles. This could be an option as well for your free days, if you like but uh, I will give you many more ideas. Okay, next please. Now, this is here the entrance um, to, the, uh, to the amphitheater. So still nowadays, it's being used for concerts and also gladiator games and also bullfights. Yes, there are still uh, bullfights, but also very gentle bull games where the bull is not being killed at the end. So I will tell you about um, this very strong Spanish influence actually in Arles and the whole region of uh, Camargue. Okay, next please. And you will see very typical animals here in Camargue. So you see the white horses and uh, the guardians. These are the cowboys, if you like. You see the black bulls and we will be able to see as well some pink flamingos. And they use actually the Camargue uh, as a navigation station uh, before they're going uh, southern 
uh, to Africa or back uh, northern uh, towards the Scandina Scandinavian countries or northern uh, European countries. So uh, especially in winter time, there are many, many flamingos and uh, we, we will be able to see some of them on the way when we're going to Eckmort. Next, please. Now, Eckmort here, as you can see, it's a um, wallet uh, town. It's uh, still um, remaining here, the city walls that you can see here. You can actually walk on the city walls as well. And you can see here the pink lakes. And as I told you, so the salt is being extracted just next to Eckmort. So it's also interesting to hear about the salt uh, extraction. Uh, already prehistorical people, they used to uh, extract salt uh, from the Mediterranean Sea just outside Eckmort. Next. So the other day, as I told you, the second day, we are going to Montpellier, a very lively city. This is the main um, the main square, which is called Place de la Comédie. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, restaurants and it's the very typical architecture of the south of France. And uh, very lively because many, many students, um, they live in Montpellier. And uh, just here next to this cathedral uh, is the oldest uh, faculty of medicine, which is still in use since 1220. So very old, more than 800 years. And we will be able to go inside. Uh, you will see the beautiful, very old building uh, from the 13th century. And of course, we are going into this very unusual shape here <laughs> uh, in the cathedral as well. So it's a very nice trip to Montpellier. And in the afternoon, we are going then to La Grande Motte. As you can see, it's by the sea. So you can uh, swim if you like in the afternoon. And you see the very unusual architecture. So it was built during the 1960s, 1970s. It was a huge project. and. Uh, well, it looks maybe ugly from the distance, but uh, if you understand the, the background, uh, why it has been built and uh, why you see these uh, buildings in the pyramid form, and of course I'm going to tell you, uh, so you will understand much better why it's one of the most popular uh, sea resorts actually here uh, in France. And we are going to walk here along the promenade as well, so you will see the Mediterranean Sea during our trip as well. Okay. Now, of course, you have heard about uh, Avignon, so it's the city of the popes, and this is here the very famous bridge, maybe you know the song, Sur le pont d'Avignon, and so on. And uh, so we can see it from uh, our coach park already, you can take some pictures, and then we are going through the medieval town of uh, Avignon and into the Pope's palace. So this is here the cathedral just outside and during the free time in Avignon, you may also walk here on this uh, rock. This was uh, the, the old town during the Middle Ages here as well. And um, you have very nice uh, panoramic views from this rock here, from this little hill just next to the palace. So you can take some pictures or have your um, lunch break uh, in this uh, public garden. And next, please. Yes. Now here you see again uh, the bridge. So this is the Rhone River. And uh, in the past, there were 22 arches. So nowadays, there are only four arches left. And I will tell you about the story of the bridge. And then uh, the highlight in, in Avignon is, of course, uh, the Pope's Palace. So it was uh, built during the 14th century. And uh, seven different popes were in Avignon uh, during 73 years, and I will tell you more about uh, not really each uh, pope, but the most important ones, and also why there were two anti popes uh, in Avignon, uh, whereas uh, there were popes in Rome as well. So it's a very interesting history that you're going to hear in Avignon. It's a very old building, very interesting. You will see the difference between uh, the Romanesque art and also the Gothic art. It's a very nice trip to Avignon. And in the afternoon, we are going to Les Beaux de Provence, which is in the Alpilles mountain range, just in the south of Avignon. 
So in the past, there was a castle here. It's also possible, uh, it's also possible to visit um, the ruins of the castle, but we are going through uh, the main shopping street. So I will walk you through the little village and then you have some free time for some coffee, ice cream or souvenirs. And it's also a very nice trip between uh, Les Bouts de Provence and uh, Arles on the way back, uh, because we are going to pass another abbey. And uh, also you see the very fertile uh, site of the Provence. So you will see a lot of orchards, um, uh, fruits, vegetables everywhere. So it's a very nice trip uh, to Avignon and Les Bouts de Provence. And as you can read, so this is really the heart of Provence in the Alpi. Okay, now we are changing the region. Oh yes, uh, sorry. First of all, the markets and the typical products in Provence. So uh, on Saturday, there's a huge market in Arles and you will be able to visit the market. It's just outside your hotel actually, so you can't miss it. You just step out of the hotel and you see one of the very typical markets in Provence. So you see a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, flowers and here you see the herbs of Provence you can see lavender little bags and uh, you can buy some soap you can buy a lot of spices so very typical products that you will be able to buy in Arles but also uh, on the French Riviera uh, in every town there is a very typical market and it's very colorful very lively and the very typical plane trees that you can see here give a lot of uh, shade in summer okay And of course, uh, the flowers. So this, uh, these are pictures that I took in May. So May, uh, when the jasmine is in bloom, jasmine was actually brought to the south of France by the Moors already during the 16th century. And here you have typical entrance doors uh, in a neighborhood in Arles. So you can also wander around. You can take a lot of pictures. And the local people, they're very proud of all the flowers in front of their windows, in front of their doors. And this is very typical. So it's a nice period in May to come to Arles in, or to the French Riviera. You see a lot of uh, very typical vegetation and flowers in bloom. And uh, you can take many, many pictures, as you can see here now, the jasmine and also other flowers, very beautiful, flower power. <laughs> okay, now we're changing a little bit uh, the region. So we were here in the western part of the Provence uh, region. Now we are going to the eastern part, very close to Italy. And uh, once again, so you're going to stay in Cannes and then we are driving along the coast to Antibes and to Nice, another day to uh, Villa Rothschild, which is just outside Nice, Cap Ferra, and then we are visiting Monaco and Monte Carlo. And the third day is then the uh, perfumery in Grasse, and then Saint Paul de Vence. So there was no um, title here, but it's the little dot here. This is Saint Paul de Vence, so it's very close to Cannes as well. And a lot of uh, ideas as well for your free days. So it's also very easy to take a bus or a train and even ferries. Uh, just outside come there are two islands. So you will be able to take a ferry to go to one of the islands. And also between end of May and October, there's also a ferry which goes to Saint-Tropez. So here is Cannes and there is Saint-Tropez. This could be also a nice idea for your free days, but I will give you many more. Okay. <laughs> and just to, yes, it, this was a repetition of our program. Yes, and I will go through when we see the pictures. Yes, please. Now, this is Cannes. This is the old town of Cannes, which is called Le Cité. And here you see the main shopping street. It's uh, called the uh, Rue d'Antibes. And your hotel, we work actually with three different hotels in Cannes. And they're on or just behind uh, the main shopping street. And then you can walk around here. You see the ports. So this is a view actually here from the hill, which is called uh, Le Suquet. There's also a little train which brings you uphill to Le Suquet. And then you can take uh, many pictures here. And you see the port and especially you see the film festival palace because Cannes is very known, very popular, uh, especially end of May for the film festival. Next, please. So this was me here on the Croisette. Croisette is the main promenade uh, in 
Cannes. And uh, as you can see, everything was prepared for the film festival. This is the very famous uh, red carpet here on the steps, uh, bringing uh, very international and popular celebrities into the palace uh, during the film festival. So during 11 days, it's just a, a, a huge buzz in uh, Cannes, a lot of glamour and uh, a lot of uh, beautiful dresses, beautiful cars. So maybe uh, watch it on television and you will see it. The, uh, you will see the very famous steps and the red carpet uh, of Cannes. So these are the two islands uh, which are just outside Cannes. So only 15 minutes to go to St. Margaret Island and 20 minutes to go to St. Honora Island. And these are heaven of peace. They have nothing to do with all the lively um, ambience in Cannes. So you can spend the whole day, you can walk around, you can have a picnic, you can just sit on the beach, you can swim. It's a beautiful clear water as you can see between the two islands here and especially St. Honora Island, there are still 20 monks living on that island and they produce their own wine, they have their own vineyards and you can taste it in the local restaurant La Tunnel. And also there's a plaque saying that uh, St. Patrick was on that island long, long time ago. So it's a very interesting trip to go to St. Honora Island or the other one is here, St. Margaret Island and very short distance from Cannes. Now, uh, this is also another influence. So uh, La Belle Epoque uh, means the golden age. Uh, it was between 1870 and 1914, just before the First World War. A lot of beautiful palaces were built in Cannes, in Nice, and all the other towns around in Monton, in Grasse, and uh, Antibes as well. And uh, so we will see many of these uh, beautiful palaces. So, uh, your hotels are very close to the Carlton Hotel. It only opened again this year. So this is a very recent uh, picture from this year. Uh, you can see it was the inauguration in March and uh, they extended the Carlton and you will be able as well just to drink a cocktail if you like in this beautiful Carlton, which was very famous, of course, during the Alfred Hitchcock movie, uh, To Catch a Thief. And this is where Grace Kelly, she stayed uh, when she met uh, Prince Reni, but I will tell you about the story when you're coming to Cannes. And this one here, Le Negresco, is the wedding cake in Nice. So it's also a very beautiful hotel. It's a palace five-star hotel, and uh, it's on the Promenade des Anglais, the main uh, promenade in Nice. Beautiful views, and inside it looks like a museum. You can also just uh, walk inside and have a cocktail if you like. Uh, more than 6,000 art objects and uh, paintings inside, it's really beautiful. Now this is Antibes, so on the first day we are driving along the Cap d'Antibes as one of the three peninsulas, and then you will be able to walk uh, in the old town, so on the ramparts you see here in the distance, it's the Chateau Grimaldi where the Picasso Museum is uh, nowadays. So if you like, you can come back on a free day and then you can visit the uh, Picasso Museum, um, Pablo Picasso, he was born in Malaga, but he spent many, many years on the French Riviera. And actually he died uh, exactly 50 years ago in 73 in Mougins, which is just outside Cannes. So he spent most of uh, his uh, lifetime on the French Riviera and you will be able to see many, many paintings, but also drawings and uh, pottery and sculptures uh, made by Pablo Picasso. And this is a view over the ports and especially the millionaire's key. So a lot of billionaires or millionaires, they have their yachts here. You can see very big yachts in Antibes. And here in the distance, we can see the fortress on a little hill because uh, Antibes has always been French and it was a very protected town in the past because as you could see on the map, so Italy was not too far away. And on the next picture, we will see in Nice. So Nice uh, was very much influenced by Italy because it was actually so-called Italian during almost 500 years. 
And we are going into the old town. You will see on uh, some other pictures. Uh, it's a complete different architecture. But here, first of all, it's the Promenade des Anglais. It's the very famous uh, promenade in Nice. So you can sit here on the very famous popular blue chairs. And you see here in the distance uh, the whole coast and also Cap d'Antibes. So it's very nice to just walk around, maybe have a local speciality like the soccer or like the pandanya. Uh, I will tell you more about all the local specialities that you may taste uh, in the old town of Nice. And then just sit here on chairs. You see there's still, still some chairs available and they are just waiting for you. Now, this is the old town of Nice. That's a very Italian looking little square which is called uh, Place Rossetti. And you see the cathedral, beautiful example of an Italian Baroque church. And next to it is a very famous ice cream maker, Finocchio, which uh, has more than 90 different flavors. So I will bring you to this lively square and you can walk around, you can taste one of the local specialities in the restaurants. And here you see another example. So a very narrow little street, it looks very Italian. Sometimes you see the clothes here drying uh, in the sun and uh, it's a very nice uh, old town so you will really enjoy this afternoon uh, in Nice. Now the following day we are going to Villa Rothschild uh, of the very famous uh, banking family. So it's just outside Nice. We are driving from Cannes to Cap Ferrat. And here you see the beautiful garden, so nine different gardens. There's a Japanese, a Spanish, French, Italian, a stone garden, rose garden, especially in, in May, beautiful roses everywhere, uh, as you can see here. They have a rose festival in May as well. And this is the villa here in pink, because pink was her favorite uh, uh, color in the past. She even had pink flamingos in her garden. Uh, I'm talking about Beatrice Efrosi de Rothschild. This is the complete name of the lady who built this beautiful villa during the Belle Epoque, so between 1907 and 1912. And here you see again uh, some examples of the gardens. This is the Spanish garden here and uh, the roses, beautiful roses here in uh, the garden of the Villa Rothschild. Now we are driving along the coast and then we are driving into one of the smallest uh, independent uh, city states or countries in the world. So it's very tiny, it's only two kilometers long and one kilometer wide. So these houses are already in France again. You see, there are only some skyscrapers here and I'm talking about Monaco. It's the most uh, densely um, populated country in the world. So only two square kilometers, but 39,000 people are living in Monaco. And we are going first into the old town. So this is a view from the old town over the port. And then here is the casino. This is Monte Carlo. This is where we're going uh, uh, our third stop uh, that day. And this is a new added uh, land here under Prince Renier. It's called uh, Fontvieille. And right now there's new uh, added land as well. It's being added under Prince Albert. So you will see uh, more and more buildings uh, in Monaco. So it's still growing this country actually. So it's a very interesting trip uh, to see Monaco and then Monte Carlo as well on the next pictures. Uh, this is first uh, the old town. Yes, this is the Prince Palace here uh, that you will be able to visit. A very interesting building. And I will tell you the story as well, how Grace Kelly, she met uh, Prince Renier, and they got actually married here in this uh, beautiful cathedral, and they're actually buried in there. So we will be able to see the grave of Grace Kelly, Princess Grace, and also Prince Renier. And then in the afternoon, we are going to the casino. Beautiful architecture as well. Uh, Charles Garnier, maybe you have already been to Paris, so it's the same architect, and you will see a lot of uh, nice cars. So there are Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Maseratis, uh, McLaren. Uh, so you will choose uh, your future car, if you like, in front of the casino in Monte Carlo. So our last trip uh, on the French Riviera, 
uh, is going to bring us to the capital of perfumes, the world capital of per perfumes in Graz. So it's uh, not too far away from Cannes. It's on the hillside and we are going to visit the historical factory of this perfumery. You will learn more about uh, how to produce uh, the essences out of very delicate flowers and also why perfume is so expensive. So you will learn more about the profession and uh, a very difficult uh, study as well to become a perfumer. And uh, afterwards, we are going into the old town to the cathedral of Graz. And every year they decorate actually the shopping uh, streets with the pink umbrellas because in Graz there's a very specific rose. It only grows in Graz and it's being used for many international perfumes, but especially for the Coco Chanel perfume, Chanel Number no. 5. And this rose is coming from Grasse, and every year they have a rose festival in May, and then they put up uh, these umbrellas here that you can see during the whole summer period in Grasse. Very nice to take pictures. And our last stop that day is in Saint Paul de Vence. So here you can see it's a medieval town, also very old ramparts from the 14th century. They got uh, reinforced during the 16th century and beautiful uh, buildings here, still the 17th century, 18th century. A lot of painters came here to paint uh, the beautiful pine trees and also the, the olive trees, the flowers in and around uh, the um, the village and uh, the golden age was act actually of uh, Saint Paul de Vence during the 1950s, 1960s, uh, during the film festival, a lot of international and French actors, they came to Saint Paul de Vence to play boule, the, the metal balls, and I will show you the square where they used to play. So it's a very nice and uh, very beautiful medieval village just outside Cannes, not too far away. and. Uh, we're going to spend um, three hours in this beautiful uh, village. So this was uh, actually the tour of uh, seven nights or eight days. And we also propose a city tour. Uh, this time you're going to stay in a four-star hotel in the city center of Nice. So I'm going to pick you up from the airport and then the following day we're doing a walking tour in Nice and in the afternoon you have free time uh, to spend more time in the old town or to take uh, the bus to visit the Marc Chagall Museum or the Henri Matisse Museum in Nice. On the second day you have uh, free time, I give you a lot of ideas what to do. And on the third day, so in the morning, we are going to Saint Paul de Vence, and then in the afternoon, I'm bringing you back to the airport. And these city breaks uh, we propose in uh, March and also in uh, October and November. And uh, this year for the first time in December as well. Actually in December, there's a Christmas market. It's funny to see a Christmas, Christmas market and palm trees around in the public garden. So it will be nice to come as well in December you can actually still go into the Mediterranean Sea if you like, and it's about maybe 12 to 15 degrees um, in December and in January. And you have beautiful blue sky, as you can see here. This is the port of Nice, and this picture I took in winter time. And it's the reason why a lot of people, not only the painters, but also a lot of uh, European queens and uh, kings and tsars, Russian tsars, they used to come to Nice uh, during winter time because of the beautiful light, because of the mild weather, and they even had uh, an official prescription uh, by their doctors to spend winter in Nice or on the French Riviera. So maybe just uh, go and see your GP and maybe you get uh, the same treatment. <laughs> So this was a presentation of the tours uh, on the French Riviera and also in Provence. Here you see again uh, a beautiful villa at Cap Ferrat and the Bougainville, just to show you the very flashy flowers uh, that we have here on the French Riviera. This is the rose garden of uh, Villa Rothschild. And here, this is a very famous rosé and you can eat some tapenade, which is the olive uh, it's a kind of um, a spread for your bread uh, made of uh, olives. So you have black olives or green olives. You have some tomatoes. So this is a, a typical apéro, aperitif here in Provence. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, my presentation and I hope to see you very soon 
either in Provence or on the French Riviera.